Michelle rushed up the stairs, slightly out of breath. She was wearing her favorite pajamas with a teddy bear on them and fluffy slippers. Not the most suitable attire for dashing outside like this. But after everything that had happened, she no longer cared about what she was wearing. In her haste, she had even forgotten her phone and wallet at home. Without them, Michelle had no idea what to do alone on the streets. Her parents had divorced when she was just two years old. Back then, they decided it would be best for the little girl to stay with her mother. Michelle's father, Peter, adored his daughter. He provided for her and picked her up every weekend. Megan, Michelle's mother, quickly found solace in new relationships after the divorce from Peter. And after each breakup, she swiftly moved on to the next man. Michelle had lost count of how many there had been. Her mother was so consumed by this whirlwind of meetings and separations that she minimized her parental responsibilities. As long as her daughter was fed and healthy, Megan was satisfied. She eased her conscience by buying Michelle expensive clothes and the latest model phones. With each new suitor, Michelle's mother saw a potential father for her daughter, subjecting Michelle to various parenting methods from each successive father figure. At least Megan didn't allow anyone to physically punish her daughter. How many different moral lessons had young Michelle endured? Gradually, the spirited girl transformed into a beautiful and headstrong young woman. Bright makeup, form-fitting miniskirts, Michelle used these to seek attention. Primarily, attention from her mother. But instead, on that very day, she found herself dealing with advances from yet another of her mother's partners, and she had to escape. Frightened and bewildered, Michelle had no idea what to do next, where to go. Walking to her father's was too far, and she didn't have money for a bus or taxi. Going to her mother's workplace was even farther. Plus, she couldn't possibly show up there in her pajamas. The only option Michelle could come up with was to wait for her mother on a bench in the neighboring courtyard. The weather was warm, and passersby paid no attention to the teenager in unusual attire. After all, who doesn't wear something odd in their own yard. And so, Michelle sat there for several hours until she spotted Megan returning from work. Mommy, I've been waiting for you so long. Michelle couldn't hold back her tears any longer. Sweetie, what happened? Why are you in your pajamas and slippers outside? Megan asked. I didn't have time to change. I had to run away from home. Todd was getting too close. I could barely fin him off. The girl rushed into her mother's arms and burst into even stronger sobs. Let's go home. We'll sort everything out there, Megan said sternly. I won't go there. I'm scared, came the reply. Don't be silly. No one will touch you with me around. Besides, I'm sure you've exaggerated what happened quite a bit, Megan reassured. Megan started walking briskly towards the house and Michelle had no choice but to follow her mother. When they entered the apartment, Todd was behaving as usual. He even attempted to kiss Megan upon greeting, but she didn't allow it. Todd feigned surprise, while stealing a quick glance at Michelle's tear-swollen face. Let's go to the kitchen. We need to talk, Megan said, skipping the usual pleasantries. And as the three of them gathered around the dining table, the woman began. I want to hear from each of you, Todd, what happened today? Megan, what can you expect from a teenager? can't even say a word without starting a scandal. Michelle wanted to go out in a way too revealing outfit. I just made a remark. She flipped out and stormed off in her pajamas, threatening to tell you all sorts of nonsense about me. That's not true. Michelle's face immediately reddened with indignation. Quiet, Michelle. You probably misunderstood Todd. He actually showed concern, so there's no need to freak out. Mom, how can you not believe me? And I'm not saying I don't believe it. There's just been a misunderstanding. What misunderstanding? What did I misunderstand when your lover tried to touch me? Okay, daughter, that's a bit much. Stop it. So you're on his side. Then I'm going to daddy. He's the only one who can protect me from Todd. And Michelle shot a disgruntled look at Todd. Who needs you except for me? She exclaimed. Your father has another family, a little child. I doubt there's even room for his eldest daughter in his apartment. Well, what should I do? Sighed Michelle. I definitely won't stay here anymore. She abruptly stood up from the table and quickly went to her room to pack her things. Megan followed her. 
Michelle, let's come down and talk, Megan said. I have nothing more to talk to you about. I understand everything perfectly, replied Michelle, not looking up from her task and not even turning her head. One by one, she took out jeans, skirts, and shirts from the closet, folding them into a large sports bag. Michelle, it's already late. Where are you going? Megan asked. Your father is probably getting ready for bed. No worries. Dad won't send me away. I know. I know he'll definitely believe me. Daughter, stop being stubborn. Stay here. I have a day off tomorrow. Even if Todd crossed the line somewhere, he won't do anything more to you in front of me. You know, I think all of this happened between us because we don't spend enough time together as mother and daughter. How about we go shopping tomorrow? We'll refresh your wardrobe. You'll calm down and forget everything. For how long will I forget? Until next time, Michelle retorted. All right, I'll spend the night here, but tomorrow morning I'm going to dad's. Great, good night, her mother said and left the room. Michelle immediately closed the door behind her and latched it. Only when she felt safe did she finally relax, collapsing into a chair. She didn't know what the best course of action was. She definitely couldn't stay here anymore, but her father's house wouldn't be very spacious for all of them together. In that regard, her mother was right. Three months ago, her father had a new child. Since then, Michelle only met her father on neutral territory cafes or parks and not as often as before. Her father indeed had a lot of other responsibilities now. Nevertheless, Michelle decided she would talk to him as soon as he woke up. That night, Michelle couldn't sleep for a long time, flinching at every sound outside her door. In the morning, she immediately called her father. He didn't answer for a while, and when he picked up, his voice sounded weary. Michelle got straight to the point. Dad, I'd like to talk to you today, but not over the phone. Michelle, let's do it tomorrow. I have very little free time today. Please, I really need to meet you. She was on the verge of hysteria. Mom's new partner was getting too close to me. I don't know what to do. I'll come right away. I'm really waiting for you, Dad. Peter rushed over half an hour later. While he was absent, Michelle was afraid to leave her room. Finally, the doorbell rang, and the girl quickly dashed into the corridor to open it for her father. Michelle didn't have a chance to say anything to him when Megan's voice sounded from behind her. Well, hello Peter. Has our daughter already come up with some nonsense for you? Megan quipped. Where is he? The man shot back without wasting time. Who, Todd? He left. But why do you need him? Megan asked. Daughter, go pack your things. I'm taking you with me. The girl was delighted to hear this and hurried to gather her remaining clothes. Peter remained in the hallway with Megan. Peter was barely holding back his anger. You know, I think your daughter makes up way too much. So they had an argument with Todd. So he grabbed her clothes awkwardly and she's already invented Lord knows what. Too vivid imagination. It's even funny, as if Todd would bother with Michelle. By the way, he always treated her kindly, and she's just ungrateful. Just then, the key grated in the lock of the front door. Todd had arrived. Peter, the newcomer looked flustered. What brings you here today? I'll explain that shortly. Let's step outside. Michelle's father's eyes gleamed. Well, I, Todd started. Well, all right, let's go, he said, lowering his head. The man opened the door again and stepped across the threshold. Concerned, Megan rushed over to her daughter. So, are you done playing around? All of this because of her lies. Well, what should we do? Call an ambulance right away. Then the front door opened, and Michelle's mother quickly emerged from her daughter's room. Peter returned to the hallway. He was alone. Megan turned pale. And where's Todd? He suddenly remembered he forgot to buy everything at the store. Peter grinned, but seeing the immense fear in his ex-wife's eyes, he added, don't worry, he's alive and well. I think he'll be back soon. Michelle, are we going? Yes, dad, I'm ready. As soon as Michelle and her father left the apartment, he said to her, my dear, I want you to know, my home is your home, no matter what happens. And he certainly didn't expect this turn of events but it's all right, she'll come to terms with the situation. Dad, I don't want to inconvenience you. You're my daughter, which means you have every right to live with me. Michelle nodded reluctantly, 
When they reached the floor and her father opened the apartment door, she immediately heard the sound of a crying baby. She felt even more awkward. Almost tiptoeing to avoid disturbing anyone, she walked into the living room and sat on the couch, while her father went into the bedroom to talk to Annie. When they emerged, Michelle quickly stood up to greet them. She glanced at Annie and immediately lowered her eyes. Even that brief glance gave Michelle the impression that her father's wife wouldn't easily warm up to the new addition in their apartment. Honey, can you please go to the store? We're out of bread. Annie asked her husband tenderly, but as soon as Peter left the apartment, her tone shifted when she spoke to Michelle. So, here's the deal. I'm not thrilled about your father's idea. I really don't know how you have the audacity to come to our two-bedroom apartment where the three of us live. And with a little child, no less. As far as I remember, your father left you a spacious apartment in the city center. So, what more do you want? Let me make it clear. I don't buy into tales about your mom's admirer. I was a teenager myself once. I know all those tricks. They are not tricks. Todd actually harassed me. Michelle tried to defend herself. Even if that's true, we have a little child here, and you're going to be a disruption. It's just for a few days, Annie. I'll try to tolerate you, but you better find another option quickly. Take care of yourself. Don't ask your father for too much money. He's going through a tough period now, and we'll even have to spend money on groceries for you. And overall, don't burden him with your complaints and concerns. He's already exhausted even without you. Don't bother our daughter. I wouldn't even trust you with an older child, let alone such a tiny one, and try to minimize our interactions, although it's not easy given our circumstances. I understand. Michelle lowered her head. When Peter returned, he could only be pleased with the harmonious atmosphere in his home. His wife was at the stove. His older daughter was engrossed in her phone while sitting in the living room armchair, and the little one was peacefully sleeping in her crib. So, how are things here? Everything's great, Dad. Michelle smiled. I'm glad, dear. Unfortunately, we won't be able to press charges against Todd for harassing you. A police friend of mine said that without evidence, we can't accuse him of anything. But we'll definitely find a solution. Of course, Dad. Michelle hugged her father. Since then, their apartment had a relatively calm atmosphere. And he turned out to be wise enough not to engage in open conflict with her husband or his older daughter. She only tried to create an environment where Peter would realize how challenging it was for all of them to live under the same roof. Michelle tried to follow Annie's advice. While doing so, she also attempted to find any possible way to move out from her father's new family as quickly as she could. She considered various options, but they all required time and money. However, returning to Megan's while Todd was there was out of the question for Michelle. Only a week after moving to her father's place, Michelle's mother called her for the first time. Michelle had felt somewhat peaceful without any communication with Megan, so she hesitated before answering when her mother's number appeared on her smartphone screen. She pondered whether she should even talk to her. However, she decided that ignoring and hiding were not her style. Yes, Michelle's voice was serious. Hello, sweetheart. Megan spoke deliberately softly. How are you? Have you completely forgotten your mother? You don't call. You don't write. Mom, enough. Oh, I forgot. I need to talk to you very cautiously. Otherwise, you come up with all sorts of things. All right. That's it. I'm hanging up. Wait. I need to talk to you. Please come over. Are you kidding? I won't step foot in your place with your Todd ever again. Come on. Calm down. I'm home alone. My man hasn't been here for a week. So, there's no one and nothing to threaten you. Michelle remained silent. Daughter, seriously, we need to meet. Fine, I'll get ready and come. When Michelle saw her mother, she simply couldn't recognize her. Disheveled, with a worn out face, dressed in some mismatched and stretched out clothing. Megan used to always take care of her appearance. What happened? Michelle couldn't come to terms with the changes in her mother's appearance. Everything is just great. I just found a man, and our life was starting to come together. And then this whole thing happened. He was here one moment, gone the next. Todd won't be showing up here anymore, but he left me a little gift. He'll have another sister or brother, I guess. Michelle was speechless. And how do you feel now, Michelle? 
you've messed up your dad's life with his family, mine, and have left an unborn child without a father. No one knows where Todd is now. He's not answering his phone. Basically, everything that happened is your and your father's fault. You've made a mess. So now, fix the situation. Bring my man back to me, and then figure out what to do next. You're already a grown-up girl. If you want to stick around with your dad, that's fine. I'm not against it. I need to arrange my own life and think about the little one. Well, then go ahead and think, and leave me alone. Michelle turned abruptly and walked away, slamming the door in front of her mother. Without hesitating for long, Megan called the police. When the dispatcher answered, she tearfully explained that after an argument, her daughter had run away from her ex-husband to him. The girl was now in inhumane conditions, and Megan begged them to save her child from having no corner of her own in a stranger's house, no chance to rest properly, and not even a proper table to study at. The police officer promised to help reunite her with her daughter. Michelle was brought to her mother by the officer when it was beginning to get dark. The young girl obediently entered the house. She knew that arguing with Megan was pointless once she had made up her mind. Michelle simply asked her mother, What exactly are you trying to achieve with this? You say one thing and then do another. Well, after the divorce from your father, the court decided that you should stay with me. So please, go to your room. Sure, whatever. It's not like it'll last long anyway. Or do you think dad will just accept that you took me away from him by force? Whether he accepts it or not is his business. And by law, you're supposed to live with me. Michelle waved her hand and went to her room, not emerging from it until morning. On that evening, Peter came home from work later than usual. There were some minor complications in the office that required his prompt attention. He was so tired by the end of the day that he only noticed Michelle's absence when he sat down to have dinner. He was deeply troubled by his wife's words that his daughter had gan to her. How? Why? A million questions swirled in his mind. Dowling, it's hard for you to understand. You're a manual, but a woman, a mother, and a daughter, they are the closest people who understand each other like no one else does. I believe Michelle and Megan will be fine. They'll sort it out themselves. I don't need my ex-daughter. I never needed her, and she was never needed. Any, she has always just used her. And now, I'm sure there's a reason she called Michelle to her. That's it. I'm going to get my daughter back. Are you out of your mind? Where do you want to run off to? It's already night. You need to rest before work. Michelle has lived with her mother her whole life, and now suddenly she's going to do something with her. Come on, calm down now, and go to sleep. You can go see your daughter over the weekend. You'll see, she's fine. If only it were that simple. Sorry, dear, but Michelle needs me right now, Peter said. Actually, your second daughter needs you too, and your wife. And he struggled to contain her emotions. And he, Michelle is going through a very difficult time right now. We'll deal with it, and then we can all go somewhere to relax. I've been waiting for your attention for so long. I'm at home alone with a little child and you're always busy with other things. Peter, it's becoming unbearable. I need help. But you never said anything about it before. The man smiled. If you want, we can hire a nanny or a housekeeper. Just please, let's talk about it later. I really need to go. You can do whatever you want. And he waved her hand. But know that if you leave now, it won't be without consequences. Peter didn't reply. He simply kissed his wife on the cheek put on his jacket, and headed out to fetch their daughter. It took him less than half an hour to reach his ex-wife's home. He had never rushed like this in his life, breaking traffic rules a few times. He was afraid that Michelle was in danger and was deeply worried that he might not reach his daughter before his ex-wife's partner got out of control again. Lost your daughter, but she's home. Where she should be, you couldn't even provide her with proper sleeping conditions, not to mention her education. Michelle's been consistently late for school. Her grades have deteriorated. All thanks to you. She's better off here. After you drove my man away. It's just the two of us now. So she can live here peacefully. And if you're not satisfied with something, go to child services or court. Megan said. Finished with your talk. Peter said calmly. Now let's get to the point. I know you too well. As always, our daughter is just your cover. What do you really want? Oh, 
Look at you being all clever, Megan smirked. Well, fine. If you want your Michelle back, return Mike Todd to me. How you're going to do it, I don't know. That's your problem. But make him start living here again. Then you can take Michelle. Are you out of your mind? Sort out your men issues yourself. I'm taking my daughter right now. Where is she? In her room, sleeping. You go and think about it. But you don't really have a choice. You give me Todd, and I'll give you Michelle. Well, for now, let the daughter sleep, Peter said. Tomorrow morning, send her over to me right away. I'll consider your offer. Great then. I'll send you Todd's details. Deal. Megan let out a satisfied chuckle. Everything was falling into place just as she had wanted. Peter returned home well into the late night hours. When he entered the apartment, no one greeted him. Yet, the man wasn't surprised by this. At such a late hour, his wife and daughter were probably sound asleep in their room. He didn't want to wake them and settled into the living room. When he woke up, the apartment was just as quiet. This unsettled Peter. He called for his wife, but received no response. He peeked into the bedroom, no one there. So he went to the kitchen, and there he found a small piece of paper on the table, held down by his half-empty teacup. It was a note from Annie. I've had enough. I tolerated your indifference for as long as I could. Our little one and I will always be second to your eldest daughter. I understand, she's less hassle. No need to get up at night, bathe her, and feed her. No need to be tied down at home. Since you don't need us, me and my daughter, we won't bother you. Go on, focus on your Michelle. We'll manage on our own somehow. Don't bother trying to call me. I won't pick up the phone anyway. When I decide, I'll contact you myself. Goodbye for now, honey. This was the last thing he needed. As if there weren't enough problems, Peter picked up his phone and despite the words in the note, he called his wife. The long rings seemed never ending. No one answered, no matter how many times he dialed the number. He felt an urge to rush and bring his wife and younger daughter back, but he decided to postpone that matter, and he could have only gone to her mother, with whom she had a good relationship. So, if he picked her up two hours later, it wouldn't change much. Michelle's situation was worse though, and right now, Peter was waiting for her arrival. In the meantime, he decided to call a friend who was a police officer and inquire about this Todd, Megan's partner. Finding information about the guy turned out to be rather easy. He was quickly checked through the database. Peter listened to what his friend told him and was horrified. His daughter was living under the same roof as a criminal. While the charges weren't the most serious, Todd still turned out to be a criminal. After a few minutes, Peter already had his address. He was still waiting for his daughter, but for some reason, she hadn't arrived yet. Just as he was about to leave to pick up Michelle, she called him herself and said she wanted to stay with her mother. Why? The man was surprised by such a sudden change. I don't want to be a burden to anyone, Michelle said, and he couldn't come to terms with my presence. She was practically overjoyed when the police came for me and brought me here. Dad, I understand that I'm a burden to you. I completely get it. Michelle, that's not true. You're my daughter. You can't be a burden to me. I don't even want to discuss that. Listen, I've got an idea. Let's discuss it, you, me, and your mom. I'll come over right now. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Peter got dressed, took the car keys from the nightstand, and swiftly left the apartment. Megan smirked self-assuredly when she saw her ex-husband at the doorway. He must have come with information about Todd. She knew that thanks to their daughter, she could manipulate Peter as she pleased. Hello, she said. Hello, I have news. I found out about your partner, Todd. He replied. Well, it's about time. The woman smiled. Let me finish. Did you know that you brought a criminal into the house where our daughter lives? Megan was taken aback but quickly regained her composure and lied. Of course, we discussed everything right away. Todd has been falsely accused. I don't really care who you live with, but I won't let your bunch near our daughter. I'll help you get your partner back, since you seem to want that. But until he returns, kindly find another place and move Michelle. As far as I remember, she owns two-thirds of your property. I gave her my share when we divorced. She can buy herself a nice studio apartment and you can get yourself an affordable two-bedroom place. I agree to those terms. Michelle, how do you feel about this idea? 
I can't say for sure right now, but it's definitely better than being awkward around you or living with mom and Todd, Michelle responded. Megan blushed with anger. What are you even talking about? Michelle already has a place to live, and you're suggesting putting a child in a separate apartment. May I ask how you envision her independent life? Who will pay for the apartment, groceries, and everything she needs? Mom, I can manage on my own. I'll work. Michelle tried to defend her father. I won't give my consent for that, and you won't get anywhere without him, Megan retorted. Well, actually, I can. I've figured it all out. Peter grew tired of watching the argument between mother and daughter, so he asked Michelle to go to her room to calmly discuss matters with Megan. Once his daughter left, he continued, think about it. I've offered the best possible options. Moreover, I'm proposing a solution that benefits you. I'll help Michelle get a bigger apartment when she's of legal age, but I understand that you want spacious living conditions right away. That's why we're willing to compromise. We'll support our daughter financially together, just like we do now. There are, of course, other ways this situation could unfold. I will still take custody of Michelle. I'll go to court, to child services, anywhere for the sake of our daughter, and I'll get what I want. And then, of course, I won't return your partner. In any case, Michelle will sell her shares, but she won't be as generous. And if you try to obstruct the arrangement, she'll just rent out the part of the apartment that belongs to her. Then you'll have to live with strangers. No guarantee you'll get along. Are you threatening me? Megan hissed. I'm trying to find a solution that works for both of us. Are you willing to sell the apartment now? I need time to decide. You don't have time. Yes or no? Fine. Yes. Megan reluctantly conceded, lips twisting in a frown. She herself decided that this wasn't the end yet. She would try to find another solution, but for now, she wanted Peter to back off and give her some time to think. Peter took his daughter, telling her that in his apartment she wouldn't feel uncomfortable anymore. He assured her that Michelle would have a more comfortable time with him. The young woman, tired of all the disputes and arguments, followed her father obediently. As Megan was leaving, she warned Peter against any attempts to take Michelle away from him through the police or any other means. In response, Megan simply nodded. While in the car, Peter told his daughter that Annie had decided to temporarily live with her mother along with the baby. Michelle sadly lowered her head and expressed regret about the problems she unintentionally caused her father. Peter hugged his daughter and reminded her that he loved her and was ready to overcome any difficulties for her happiness. As for Annie leaving, it didn't concern Michelle at all. His wife had always been a strong-willed woman, and now the birth of their daughter had further strengthened her character. Peter was convinced that all of them needed to calm down, take a pause, and carefully consider everything. Dad, do you really want to sell my share of the apartment and put me in a separate studio? Michelle asked. Of course, Michelle, it's the best option. Are you against it? I don't know, but you know mom. She'll do anything to sabotage us. Don't worry, she won't. For some reason, she's really focused on getting Todd back. She's willing to do a lot for that. She's pregnant with his child, Michelle said softly, turning her gaze to the window. That's why she's trying so hard to find him. Oh, I see what's going on now. In any case, we need to quickly exchange apartments. I know a realtor, and I'll take you home now and then go to her. As soon as Michelle entered the apartment, Peter got back into the car and headed to the real estate agency, to his acquaintance Joanna, with whom he had studied in university. Along the way, he turned toward the house, where his wife and daughter were most likely at the moment, but he wasn't able to see them. Instead, his mother-in-law came out to meet him and firmly closed the front door behind her. Without holding back her expressions, she vividly described her position and an ease position towards him and his elder daughter. The essence of her long emotional speech boiled down to the fact that Peter shouldn't even attempt to approach his wife or their baby until he resolved the issues with his elder daughter. Peter agreed that his wife had the right to live wherever she wanted. However, he warned that if she interfered with his meetings with their younger daughter, he wouldn't stand for it. He would fight for his rights, even if it meant going to court. This last statement triggered a new wave of insults and curses directed at him. Peter chose not to react to his mother-in-law's words. He simply turned and left. The whole situation, the problems with Michelle, 
the scandals with Megan had drained him considerably. When he reached Joanna, his acquaintance and realtor, he arrived feeling empty and tired. Well, well, Peter, long time no see. Though I have to say, you don't look too great. What happened? Joanna's demeanor clearly showed her genuine delight in seeing her old friend. She suggested they go to her office and settle down on a comfortable couch. There's a lot on my plate right now, Peter began, and one of those things is why I came to you. I'll be happy to help, Joanna replied, her lips curling into a smile. Joanna, you see, I need to quickly sell the apartment where Megan and Michelle live. And then, with the proceeds, I need to buy a studio and a two-bedroom apartment. Yes, that's quite a task. Selling in your area can be swift, but finding two apartments to purchase right away won't be so easy. Joanna, it's simpler than that. We can look for a two-bedroom or a studio in different areas. In fact, it would be ideal if they were as far apart from each other as possible. Really, what happened? Why do you need my help urgently? Joanna asked. A lot has happened, just in the past week. How about we go somewhere now and grab some coffee? There's a nice cafe just around the corner. I'll listen closely to your story and help as best as I can. Joanna smiled again. Fifteen minutes later, they were seated at a table, waiting for their orders. Peter felt the need to be heard, and he began to tell his longtime acquaintance about what had been happening in his life recently. Joanna was astonished by the behavior of the two adult women, Megan and Annie. You know, Peter, I didn't mention this before, but even during our only meeting with Annie and her mom, when you were choosing the apartment, both of them seemed dodd to me. My little girl only deserves the best accommodation, and yes, it must also be the cheapest. What a great demand, right? Peter laughed at that. Oh, I remember how Annie grumbled when I presented her with different options. You, my dear picked your first wife, and then the second. Both of them are quite a handful. No, it is not like that. In the end, with your help, we did find a great place. Joanna, my second wife changed a lot after giving birth. Maybe she's experiencing postpartum depression or something hormone-related. I see. First childbirth depression, then daycare depression, then school and additional depression. That's how men live in illusions. In reality, both your wives were obviously unstable. And while Annie is just starting to cross boundaries, Megan's behavior shocks me entirely. Trading her own daughter for some criminal. And you even want to give her a big chunk of the money from selling their apartment. Maybe it's better to invest heavily in your daughter's future instead. Of course, I'll invest in Michelle. But right now, I don't want her mother giving us a hard time. They'll exchange properties, and if Megan wants to gift her part to her lover, that's her business. The main thing is for our daughter to be calm and comfortable. I understand. Joanna agreed. Take some time to think about what's best for you, and I can already offer you one studio. I really liked it. The finishing is simply splendid. But as for the spacious two-bedroom, we'll have to think. I'm afraid it won't be easy to stay within the remaining budget. Joanna, you used to communicate fine with Megan, right? Peter looked at his friend attentively. Maybe you could talk to her woman to woman. After all, Michelle is her daughter, and she could soften her demands a bit for the sake of her own child's well-being. All right, I'm no stranger to this. I've dealt with cases like this in my work before and always found a way out. Joanna assured. I'll be very grateful. Peter smiled. The most important thing is for everything to work out for you and for you to finally breathe easy. Joanna responded. Joanna immediately got to work. She met with Megan, showing her several potential options for her new place, but it was difficult to please her. Megan found faults in each proposed apartment. It got to the point where she even criticized the way potential neighbors looked at her. At this point, Joanna suspected that it wasn't actually about the apartments themselves, which she had carefully selected. Megan. I've been working in real estate sales and purchases for many years. Do you know how many times I've encountered this kind of behavior? Joanne asked. What behavior? Megan widened her eyes, feigning surprise. Exactly this behavior, where a realtor tries to accommodate, but the client intentionally finds faults in every proposed apartment. Do you think I don't understand or notice? You're clearly not interested in swapping homes. 
You're trying so hard to impress my ex-husband. I've noticed for a while now that you're trying to catch his attention. What is it about him that caught your eye? Megan, I think you're clearly not thinking about the right thing. You need to make an important decision right now. Of course, you can keep turning your nose up, dragging out the apartment sale process, but Peter will find a way to get what he wants anyway. There are several legal methods for that. I advise you to think carefully before turning down the proposed deal. I've already explained to Peter, what he agreed with you on isn't an equal share. Your daughter will lose a lot in this, but he's standing firm for now. And when he realizes you have no intention of selling the apartment, he might retract his offer. Then you'll be left with nothing. Oh, well, you've scared me now. You know, I have other interests, and even such a generous offer, as you emphasize, doesn't suit me. Megan grinned. I'll tell you honestly, I want to keep our apartment for myself and Michelle. It's my home, I'm used to it, and I plan to set up a separate nursery here for my future son. Joanna, please help me with this. Megan began to speak softly and plaintively. Understand me, after all, you're a woman too. I'm alone, pregnant, everyone's turned away from me. My husband Peter drove me away, my daughter betrayed me and now they want to take away everything from me and the little one. Joanna, let me give you a quarter of the value of this apartment, and you somehow resolve the situation. Yes, Joanna looked at her, pulling happy you. They offer her twice as much money as she's entitled to, and she's appealing to pity. Megan, I don't want to interfere, but know that I completely disagree with your stance. I'll convey our conversation today to Peter. Well then, you two are in for a long, tough process of exchanging my apartment, which likely won't end the way you want it to. I won't agree to sell my home. That's what I understood earlier. Well then, let's take a different path. All the best, Megan. To you two, the woman smirked. When Joanna went to meet with Peter to discuss the results of her work with Megan, she couldn't shake off an unpleasant feeling. When it came to real estate exchange, people often ceased to be humane striving to maximize their gains from the deal. The realtor had encountered similar situations many times before, but now, dealing with her acquaintances, it was particularly uncomfortable. How could one focus on an unborn child and completely forget about the daughter they already had? Peter, I have nothing positive to report. Megan is very determined and wants to keep the entire apartment for herself. She was very candid about everything and even suggested buying out Michelle's share. Of course, I declined, Joanna explained. Right, a large portion belongs to the daughter. What's our next move, Joanna? We'll have to sell the designated share. It's naturally more complicated and takes longer, but what else can we do? First, we'll send Megan a letter offering to buy Michelle's share, and I'll try to ensure the letter doesn't reach her. Then we'll wait a month and sell a portion of the apartment based on legal grounds. Okay, Peter nodded. Work on that matter. If there are any additional expenses, I'll cover them. Meanwhile, I'll try a different approach with Megan. Peter remembered Todd. First, he needed to visit the address he got from the police officer. He got into his car, turned on the GPS, and drove off. Soon enough, Peter turned off the main road and drove deeper into the courtyards of old, neglected buildings. He was quite surprised that the address where Megan's partner lived brought him here. Despite his doubts, the range of unpleasant emotions, and the repulsive appearance of the building, Peter decided not to waste time and to take action immediately. He took a step into the dark space behind the entrance door and went inside. After climbing four floors, where small piles of trash gathered in corners and foul language adorned the walls, he reached a door with torn upholstery and a non-functional doorbell. According to the information he received from the police officer, Todd was supposed to live right here. Peter knocked with all his might, but no one answered, so he knocked even harder. Eventually, he heard shuffling steps from behind the door. The figure that emerged from the opening door was difficult for Peter to identify as male or female at first. Red face with bloodshot eyes from constant drinking, dirty hair haphazardly tied up with an elastic band at the back, a crumpled and soiled robe, a low, smoke-affected voice. It took him a moment to determine that the creature in front of him was a woman. 
He was completely convinced when this unpleasant individual introduced herself as Natalie, and judging by her words, she was Todd's lawful spouse. The actual homeowner was currently absent. However, despite this, his spouse kindly invited Peter to come inside the apartment. Trying to overcome his disgust, Peter still decided to wait for Todd and entered. The interior of the apartment matched the atmosphere in the entrance. Grubby walls with peeling wallpaper in places, food packaging remnants on the floor, and the most unpleasant part, a terrible smell that seemed to permeate everything here. Natalie led Peter into a room and offered him a seat on a dirty chair covered with a newspaper. Politely, he declined. She briefly left the room and returned with a cut glass tumbler and a bottle of vodka. She placed them in front of her guest and attempted to offer him a drink, but he declined once again. While they waited for Todd, Peter tried to gather more information from the woman. As it turned out, they had been married for a long time. A few years into their marriage, they had a son who was taken away by Child Protective Services due to unsuitable living conditions. However, the woman wasn't distressed about this fact. Now, nothing prevented her and Todd from living as they pleased. Peter understood that Todd probably wouldn't want to become a father again. Megan was someone he could only pity in this situation. Despite his reluctance, Peter had to wait for Todd, but he couldn't bear to be in the room any longer. He bid a quick farewell, explaining that he was in a hurry, and rushed down the stairs before exiting the building. Outside, Peter started breathing greedily, mouth open, as he took in the fresh air. Now it was time to visit Megan. Let her look at her partner from a different angle. Peter decided to focus on the information about Todd for now and not let on that he knew about Megan's reluctance to sell the apartment and her attempt to bribe the realtor. Megan greeted Peter with suspicion. Well, hello. I can see that Joanna has sent in the heavy artillery. She must have told you everything already. I don't know what you're talking about, Peter replied calmly. I gathered that the options offered to you didn't suit your preferences but it would be strange if you agreed to move into the first available housing. Take your time to decide. I didn't come here about that matter. I found your admirer and even paid him a visit. That's a different story. Megan's eyes lit up with interest. He's living in terrible conditions with a woman named Natalie. And from what I understood, she's his legal wife. I don't believe that. Megan's smile slowly faded. Would he be living with me if he had a wife? You are saying all this just to upset me. I have no need to do that. I didn't even have to make anything up. It's like a fairy tale. The further you go, the scarier it gets. And one more thing. Todd already has a child. That's definitely a fabrication. He always said he matured with me to the point of becoming a father. Megan was getting angry. So, they took away his parental rights for that child. Apparently, it was because at the time of the child's birth, he hadn't matured yet. Peter smirked, and you were only needed by him for your apartment, you and Michelle. Enough, I don't believe a single word you're saying. Do you want to see for yourself that I'm telling the truth? Get dressed, let's go. Where? To Todd's place, where else? Megan quickly disappeared behind the door of her room and emerged about 20 minutes later in full attire. She was brightly made up, wearing a figure-hugging outfit that accentuated her curves. They reached their destination swiftly. Good Lord, what is this? Megan stood before the house where Peter had recently conversed with Natalie. Does anyone even live here anymore? Yes, at the very least, your chosen one and his wife. Let's go there, Peter suggested. No way. But you wanted to find Todd yourself. He's there. Come on, he's waiting for you. Megan pondered for a few seconds and ultimately entered the building, following her ex-husband. When they reached the correct floor and knocked, the door was opened by the apartment's owner himself. Oh, so it's you who came, he said. Natalie mentioned someone was looking for me. What do you want? I haven't gotten close to your daughter anymore and I don't intend to. Why have you come? At first, Todd only saw Peter in the doorway, but a minute later, Megan emerged from behind the man immediately wrapping her arms around her former partner's neck. Darling, I finally found you. I missed you so much. Todd attempted to disentangle himself from Megan's embrace and bewilderment. Megan, that's enough. I hoped you'd moved on long ago and wouldn't bother me. Haven't you understood? 
it's over, so take your ex-husband and leave. But my love, everything has changed. We're going to live together, and no one will interfere with us anymore. Yeah, right. I'm not going to keep running around like this every time. No, enough of this. Todd, who's there? Natalie's low voice reached them. My acquaintance. He's leaving already. Todd, who is this woman? Megan was almost shouting. If Todd had lied now, claiming he didn't know Natalie or had said some other implausible nonsense, Megan would have gladly believed it. But the illusions shattered quite rapidly. She is my wife, Todd replied and looked challengingly at his former partner. Todd, are you actually married? But Megan refused to believe this bitter truth. Well, yes, what can I say? We certainly had our fun with you. I enjoyed it initially, until this whole situation with you, your daughter, and your ex-husband began. Who knows, maybe other relatives would have shown up. I don't need any of this. Sort it out yourself. But, but I'm expecting a child from you, Todd. What am I supposed to do now? Figure it out yourself somehow. You're already an adult. Do I need to teach you? Oh, I get it. You need money for an abortion, don't you? How much do you need? What are you saying? This is our child. Tears welled up in Megan's eyes. All right, that's enough for me. Goodbye. Todd slammed the door shut in front of the unwelcome guests. Megan darted out of the entrance like a bullet. Tears mixed with her makeup as she approached Peter's car, and she forcefully kicked its tire. Understanding her emotional state, Peter forgave this outburst. As they got into the car, Megan didn't bother to hold back anymore and burst into a stream of tears mixed with curses. Peter tried to console her. Megan, come on, there's no reason to be upset over someone like Todd. Seriously, you must have realized that he's a whole different kind of person. He pursued selfish goals when he was with you. You saw the conditions he was living in. He wanted to improve them by being with a wealthier man. But you deserve better. I hardly recognize you now. You have always been proud and self-assured. And now, Peter, save your lectures for your daughter. Just take me home, Megan retorted. And do you think I'm going to do anything for you after those words? Get out of the car. Don't drag it out. Michelle is waiting for me at home. She can wait, Megan grumbled. You know, from the very beginning, I actually wanted to drive you home, understanding your interesting situation. But after that kind of treatment, you can go by yourself. Megan continued to sit in the car, her brows furrowed. Peter waited for a moment, started the engine, and drove off. However, instead of heading towards his ex-wife's home, he drove towards his own place. When Megan realized this, she started asking to be let out. Peter drove his ex-wife to a bus stop, dropped her off, and continued on to his own home. While Megan waited for her bus, she pondered her situation. Her circumstances were certainly far from enviable. She now found herself without the father of her future child. And soon, she might even lose her apartment. That was definitely not something she wanted. She needed to think of something urgently. But what? Peter was determined. He was willing to leave his ex-wife with nothing, all for Michelle's sake. Wait, his daughter is waiting. Why didn't he mention that his wife and little daughter were also waiting? Did they not want to see him? It was unclear. However, if that was the case, she could turn the situation to her advantage. She just needed to make sure that Annie and the child had left him. She needed to find out everything from Michelle. Thinking about this, Megan almost missed her bus, but snapped out of it just in time. Already seated in the transport, she decided to call her daughter first thing in the morning. Megan did just that. She dialed Michelle's number and listened to the long rings on the other end. Finally, Michelle answered the call. Well, that's good. All she needed to do now was play the concerned mother who missed her child and lure her daughter into a conversation about the topic that interested Megan. But Michelle was never known for her cunning or grudges, which was a big plus for Megan. Right now, it wasn't too difficult for her to secure her daughter's agreement to meet. And that was it. Mission accomplished. Michelle, with skepticism, received her mother's invitation. What to expect from her was unclear. But fighting with a close person was incredibly difficult for her. So she brushed aside all doubts and started getting ready to meet Megan. She had no intention of filling her father in on the situation. 
it was unlikely he would understand or approve of her decision to meet her mother. Hey, come on in, sweetie. Megan positively beamed as Michelle appeared at the doorway of their apartment. I'm so glad to see you, dear. Hi, mom. I actually just ordered some pepperoni pizza delivery and a couple of bottles of cola. Everything you like. I really hope you'll enjoy our little girl's night in. I see, Michelle replied skeptically. The girl didn't share her mother's upbeat mood and was ready for a trick at any moment. Megan realized that her communication style might not be enough to win her daughter over or engage her in conversation, so she immediately shifted her tactics. Michelle, you know, when you left, it became so empty here without you. I've been reminiscing more and more about how we used to spend evenings in the kitchen with your father. He would hold you, goof around, and you'd laugh so loudly. That image keeps coming to my mind almost every night. Back then, it felt like we were happy, and it would always be that way. Mom, why did you and Dad split up? Michelle asked a question that had been bothering her for a long time. Well, you know, sweetie, now I understand that it was due to foolishness. We were Poe students back then. You were born. There were money troubles, sleepless nights, academic difficulties. I became very irritable. Eventually, it all led to a big argument. I told your father then that I would raise you myself, but I made that decision because I knew you would help. Your dad always adored you, so I was confident I wouldn't be left alone without support. And now, now you wouldn't leave him, right? I think not, Megan sighed. She continued in a different tone. But what's the point of discussing that now? Your father has a new wife, a little child. He's happy in this marriage. Very, Michelle sighed unhappily. Why are you feeling down, sweetheart? It's because I moved to dad's and Annie took our daughter and left him. Michelle's brow furrowed. Megan internally rejoiced. She had steered her daughter so deftly into the desired topic that Michelle herself divulged the information she needed. Are you serious? Megan feigned surprise. Yes, but dad believes everything will work out soon. He says Annie's just going through postpartum depression, so she's reacting so strongly to everything. But I don't even know if that's the reason. His wife and the little one are with her mother now. She even avoids his calls when he tries to contact her. Michelle didn't notice that despite her mother's best efforts, she couldn't help but smile. I see. Well, got her. That's not our problem. I'm sure dad will sort it out on his own. Oh, look at us. How we've chatted away. It's already starting to get dark. Michelle, how about staying the night with me? No, mom. Dad doesn't even know I'm here. He thinks I'm out with my friends. I'm going to go to him. All right, Megan agreed. Just let this conversation stay between us, okay? After Michelle left, Megan started contemplating her next steps. In her mind, she had developed what seemed like a foolproof strategy that she was prepared to execute gradually. To begin with, she decided to get closer to her daughter. Michelle was more than happy about this. Megan and Michelle began to communicate frequently. One day, Megan initiated a conversation about the importance of telling their father about their reconciliation. Michelle protested, not wanting to upset her dad who was already dealing with problems because of her. But Megan insisted, inviting both Michelle and Peter over to her place. She convinced her daughter that this would be an excellent opportunity for them all to have a calm discussion and mend their relationships. The daughter agreed, but before discussing the invitation with her father, she herself informed him about the reconciliation with her mother. Peter frowned a bit upon hearing this. He didn't fully trust his ex-wife. However, seeing how excited their daughter was, he decided not to show his skepticism. But who knows? What if the situation with Todd had such an effect on Megan that she reconsidered her stance towards Michelle? Peter didn't understand why Megan had invited him as well, but he thought that it would make his daughter happy if they both went together to her mother's place for dinner. Megan had prepared well for the meeting. She dressed up, set the table, looked contentedly at the numerous treats, then at herself in the mirror, and started waiting for the guests. In light of recent events, she had changed her perspective on life. After countless encounters and breakups with different men, she realized that among all the others, her ex-husband always stood out favorably. He appeared much more reliable, strong, and responsible than her other lovers. 
and in the situation Megan found herself in now, these qualities have become especially important to her. That's why she organized this dinner. She really hoped she could reconcile with Peter. When her ex-husband and daughter arrived, she tried to be as positive as possible around him. Peter was pleasantly surprised by such a warm reception and a delicious dinner. And Michelle, she was just radiating happiness. After the guests were fed, Megan decided to talk to Peter alone, asking Michelle to go to her room. Peter, I wanted to thank you. You really helped me see what a scoundrel Todd was. I was foolish. He somehow charmed me so much that I even put my own daughter on the back burner. Can you believe it? I didn't listen to anyone, neither Michelle nor you. I regret it so much. I'm glad you realize it now. Oh yes, life has brutally opened my eyes to Todd. Time passed, I calmed down and began to understand why all of this happened to me. I saw how well things were going for you personally. You got married again, became a father for the second time. In the midst of all this, I guess I started feeling lonely. Why did you feel that way? You have a daughter. Yes, but Michelle is a teenager and she doesn't need her mom as much as before. She's living with different interests, so I started lacking love and affection. Megan, you yourself stopped paying attention to your daughter. I actually thought it was her who became distant. But now I think, maybe, yes, not just maybe, you're probably right. In any case, I'm so grateful to you for helping us mend our relationship. For me, the most important thing is for my daughter to be happy, and for me too. Oh, why are we talking only about Michelle and me? How about you? How are things for you? You've been through a lot lately. Michelle said things aren't going smoothly with your wife. Of course, I don't want to intrude into your life, but Michelle worries about you, and I worry for her. Yes, I understand, Megan, but it's nothing. I think everything will get better soon. If there are problems in your family because of Michelle, just let me know. I'll talk to her, and she'll come back here. I promise, no more men in this apartment. Thank you, but there's no need for that. Megan, it's time for us to go. We have a lot to do tomorrow. Oh, it's late. Hey, how about you and Michelle stay over? The apartment is spacious. There's enough room for everyone. No, thank you again, but we'll head home. Peter declined. Megan, of course, was a bit disappointed that she couldn't convince her ex-husband to stay with her. But overall, she considered the evening a success and a promising beginning. She just needed to put in a bit more effort and she believed she could get back on good terms with her ex-husband again. Megan was eagerly anticipating that Peter and her daughter would visit her again. This way, she thought she would achieve two goals at once, reconnecting with Peter and eliminating the need for an apartment exchange. All she had to do was strengthen her relationship with her daughter even more, to the point where she would come back to live with her. However, in the following days, Peter had no time for visits other than to realtors. He continued to actively pursue real estate matters, and Joanna would send his ex-wife links to apartments that she thought were suitable once a week. Initially, Megan was disappointed that her plan hadn't worked out, but she quickly found another strategy to achieve the same goal winning back her ex-husband. She agreed to the exchange. Moreover, she would choose the worst among the suggested apartments. This would make Peter feel guilty that his interference had left a pregnant woman in difficult conditions. Meanwhile, Megan would portray herself in the best light by prioritizing her daughter's comfort over her own. Additionally, the old apartment she decided to pick would require renovation. She wouldn't, of course, handle it herself, being pregnant. Naturally, her ex-husband would offer his help, which Megan would gratefully accept. This would bring them closer. Megan decided to act promptly, so she immediately called Joanna. Hi, I've decided to go with the last apartment you offered me. That's surprising, Joanna exclaimed. Not long ago, you were considering much more suitable options, and now you're agreeing to an old place. Life circumstances have changed. Plus, I thought that constant objections might eventually annoy Peter, and then even this option wouldn't be on the table. Let's go and see this apartment. I'll check with the owner when they can show it, and I'll call you back. Joanna didn't know whether to be happy about this sudden change or to look for a catch in Megan's behavior. Such a drastic shift couldn't have occurred without a reason. She decided to share her doubts with Peter. It's strange, he was also surprised. 
Joanna, could Megan's behavior somehow hide her our apartment exchange? I'll make sure to double check everything, Peter. So, I think everything should go smoothly. But I don't really understand what your ex-wife's goal is. If you ever find yourself in any unclear situation, just give me a call. Thanks, Joanna. I'll do just that. On the same day, the realtor and Megan went to see the apartment. In reality, the place turned out to be even worse than in the photos. Old renovation, outdated plumbing, and dirt, that's what Joanna noticed first, much to her surprise. To her astonishment, Megan liked the apartment. In fact, she liked it so much that she agreed to put down a deposit as soon as possible to secure it. The realtor smirked. I doubt that such housing is in high demand among potential buyers. Megan, are you sure you want to buy this particular apartment? Joanna cautiously asked. Yes, why not? Megan did her best to genuinely portray her lack of understanding. But, I think you didn't inspect it carefully enough. I've offered you more suitable options. No, Joanna, thank you for trying to help. But I'm sure I want to buy this place. The realtor just shrugged. Back in the office, she immediately called Peter. Peter, the showing is over. So, how did it all go? Peter, honestly, I'm still in shock. She decided to go for, putting it mildly, not the best apartment. I don't even know what Megan found appealing about it, but she's arranged to make the deposit today. And in the coming days, she plans to make an advance payment for Michelle's studio. Oh, I wasn't expecting this turn of events. Peter replied, sounding joyful. That's the thing. Doesn't Megan's behavior seem very strange to you? Well, I don't understand her either. Peter agreed. But let's add rest problems as they come. For now, let's quickly finalize the transactions. After that, Joanna continued to be surprised by Peter's ex-wife. Megan not only didn't obstruct the sale and purchase of the apartments, but also did everything to expedite the process. Besides putting down a deposit for her two-bedroom apartment and her daughter's studio, Megan even offered to pay the remaining amount needed for purchasing the studio from her own pocket. As it turned out, the money from the sale of their apartment with Michelle wasn't sufficient for the preferred housing option. When all the paperwork hassle was behind them, a satisfied Megan invited Michelle and Peter over to her new place. When Peter arrived at his ex-wife's new apartment, he was disappointed. The conditions here weren't the most suitable for a pregnant woman. Megan herself, however, was very pleased with the acquisition. After Peter inspected the apartment and grew even more gloomy, commenting that the new place definitely needed renovation, Megan responded that she couldn't afford it right now. She quickly shifted the conversation to Michelle's studio, discussing the advantages of the new housing for her daughter. But the thought that Megan's apartment would need repairs lingered in Peter's mind. His ex-wife knew him too well. Just as she intended, he began considering helping her with this challenging task. As the evening concluded and Peter and Michelle got into the car to leave, he asked his daughter where she wanted to go, to her new apartment or to his place. Dad, can I stay at your place a bit longer? Michelle, I don't understand. I'm not against it, of course, but we've talked about this many times. You were in a hurry to move to your own place several times before. And now that we've sorted everything out, you don't want to stay there. Of course, I do. But back when mom was with Todd, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't stay under the same roof with both of them. And now, when there are no such problems, we didn't have to hurry, right? After all, you and Annie aren't together anymore. And I won't bother anyone in your apartment now, will I? You haven't bothered anyone. I've said many times that my home is your home. Peter replied with a sigh. Michelle didn't know that he had been in touch with his wife for the past few days. He decided not to tell his daughter about it for now. She'd had enough to worry about, and it wasn't really Michelle's concern. During the ride home, Peter remained silent. His thoughts were occupied by his wife and their younger daughter. He tried to figure out the best course of action to have Annie and the baby return to him while ensuring that Michelle didn't feel uncomfortable living in their apartment. However, he wasn't the one to initiate communication with his wife initially. Peter was preoccupied with his daughter's issues. He did make attempts to talk to Annie, but each time he was thwarted by his mother-in-law. After a short while following their separation, a tired Annie, 
tired of living next to her quarrelsome mother, called her husband herself. Of course, this wasn't how she had envisioned her departure and return. She had expected Peter to show up at her mother's house on the first night with a bouquet of flowers, begging her and the baby to come home. But things didn't go as planned. Moreover, her mother got involved, deeming Peter a scoundrel who put his older daughter's interests before his family's. Her mother lectured her every day, adding at every convenient opportunity. I told you, but you didn't listen to me. And he could only sob and respond that she hadn't expected such betrayal from her husband. Her mother's anger only intensified from these words, and the young woman no longer knew how to end a conversation that had now devolved into listing all the hardships their family would face in the future. What could she say? Annie's expectations about leaving and living with her mother were far from realized. She had thought her mother would take on at least some of the responsibilities for taking care of the little child. That would have given her a chance to relax, spend time with friends, and take care of herself. But her mother had a completely different vision of their life together. She not only didn't help her daughter with the baby, but also shifted some household chores onto her. Annie's life under these conditions changed her attitude toward her husband and the situation that had unfolded at home. Now she was ready to tolerate Michelle's presence in their apartment and even the possible appearance of her husband's other children, should they suddenly show up. She just wanted to restore her comfortable existence. However, her pride prevented her from returning to her husband immediately. Besides, she was afraid that Peter might also show a stubborn side and not want to reconcile with her. Well, she had brewed this mess herself. She would have to deal with it. To start, she decided to test the waters and message Peter that he could see their little daughter whenever he wanted. She wouldn't stand in the way. Peter, who missed Annie and their little child, sees this conversation as an opportunity to gradually rebuild communication with his wife. Meanwhile, Annie tried to maintain a good relationship with her mother. She decided to make an effort to convince her that Peter wasn't as bad as she thought. Mom, you're too categorical. My husband has always been a good father. So why do you say I shouldn't let him see our baby? Well, daughter, did you leave him? You left. And notice, not for no reason. I agree with you there. He behaved like a scoundrel. He created inhumane conditions for you and my granddaughter. What inhumane conditions, mom? It's just that we felt cramped and uncomfortable living with his older daughter. Wait, why are you suddenly defending him? Weren't you telling me something else at the beginning? Were you cursing him? And his mother gave her daughter a suspicious look. Yes, mom, we, we started communicating again. So, my daughter first ran away from her husband to teach him a lesson, then realized that he was doing just fine without her, that he wasn't exactly desperate to have her back, and she gave up her pride and crawled back to him herself. Well, that's not how I raised you, of course, not to be weak and not to be coddled. Shameful. I'm ashamed of you. Mom, how can you say such things? I'm your daughter. Well, so what if you're my daughter? But there's nothing of mine left in you. You're all your father's, who, by the way, abandoned us a long time ago. Sigh. No wonder I immediately kicked your Peter out when he showed up here. I knew you'd backtrack. What? Annie was surprised. Peter came here, and you didn't tell me anything. And now you are saying that he doesn't need us. Me and the baby. If he needed you, he wouldn't have left so easily after talking to me. Or he would have come back. Where is he? All right, that's it, said Annie with a stern voice. I've had enough of all this. I thought I'd come to my own mother, at least get back on my feet. Relax while she takes care of her granddaughter. And what, oh, have you even spent any time with her, so I could just go to the store without the baby? And should I have? It's not me who decided to give birth. So don't hang your motherly responsibilities on me. Who's hanging anything? I just thought it would be psychologically easier this way. But no, it's all just stress and lectures on how to manage men. You brat, retorted her mother. Is this how you talk to your mother? I took you in when you ran away from your husband, and now I have to listen to this. Well, then, pack your things and go to your husband's. With great pleasure, Annie grabbed her daughter, her bags, and quickly left her mother's apartment. As the young woman descended and cooled down, she realized that besides going to her husband, she had nowhere else to go. 
she certainly didn't want to just rush to Peter like a storm. Their communication had been developing gradually, and they hadn't reached an agreement about returning yet. But what was Annie supposed to do now? Taking a deep breath and setting aside her own pride, she drove to their apartment with her husband. When she opened the front door, Michelle met her. Figured you'd still be here. And he rolled her eyes. Where's my husband? He's gone on some errands. And what did you come for? I actually came back home. And what business is it of yours? A very big one. Go back where you came from. You ran away from dad in a tough situation. And as soon as everything settled down, you're right back here. I won't let you hurt him again. I won't let you in. I won't even ask you. And if you decide to get in the way of us and the baby, you'll pay for it. I'll call Peter right now and tell him that you kicked us out of the apartment. Let's see whose side he'll take. Michelle understood that her dad wouldn't likely support her at this moment. With a heavy sigh, she still backed down. In reality, Michelle had acted impulsively, without considering the consequences of her actions. She had simply succumbed to the first impulse. She was very upset for her dad. Moreover, she felt jealous of his attention towards his wife and their younger daughter. Their appearance was an unexpected turn of events for her, which threatened her with moving back to her own apartment. There, she would feel even more unnecessary. After quickly regaining her composure, Michelle apologized to Annie, explaining her behavior by her deep concern for her father. Towards evening, Peter returned. As soon as he closed the door behind him, he heard voices in the kitchen and saw his wife's shoes in the hallway. He was very happy about Annie and their youngest daughter coming back. Hey, he said with a smile, seeing his wife engaged in a peaceful conversation with Michelle over a cup of tea. Annie, you're back. Yes, the woman said, lowering her gaze. I hope you won't mind. Why would I? Of course not. Their conversation was interrupted by the sound of a baby crying. Annie was about to run to the baby, but Peter stopped her, saying that he would calm the baby down himself. While he was busy with the baby, his wife silently entered the room. Leaning against the door frame, she watched as her husband gently hugged the baby, changed her diaper, picked her up as if she were a fragile treasure, kissed her affectionately, and rocked her. Seeing that the baby had fallen asleep, he very gently placed her in the crib. Annie, who had been observing all this, couldn't hold back her tears. She had left such a good husband and caring father to be with a dry and quarrelsome mother. Quietly, she approached Peter and hugged him. The spouses stood like that for a long time, simply silent. After a while, Annie decided to break the silence. She took her husband's hand and led him out of the bedroom to the living room. Darling, I want to ask for your forgiveness. It wasn't very nice of me to just take the baby and run away from you like that. But I was completely lost. I thought that you didn't need us, me and our little one, because you were spending almost all your time with Michelle. I felt lonely. I missed your attention and care. But now, seeing you rocking our little daughter, I realized I was wrong. You love her very much. Of course, Annie. And I also want to apologize for my mother's behavior. I didn't know until today that you came and wanted to talk to me. And my mother made the decision for me. My dear, you don't need to apologize for someone else. You're not responsible for your mother. Peter, I promise you that I won't just run away like that again. Besides, I have nowhere else to run. And he smiled sadly. Mom said she won't take me back anymore. Peter embraced his wife once again. After standing like that for a little while, and he gently pulled away from him. Darling, I wanted to discuss another matter with you. While I was at my mom's, I thought a lot about why I react so strongly to everything. I realized that I'm not handling the situation and my emotions well. Peter, I searched the internet, talked to girls in a chat who went through something similar. It seems to me that I have postpartum depression. I don't know how you'll take it, but I would like to see a psychologist. Hey, if you feel it's necessary, I'm not against it. Although Peter understood that paying for his wife's visit to a specialist wouldn't be easy now, after buying the apartment for Michelle, he agreed. Maybe getting help from a psychologist would help restore peace in their family. As for the money, he would figure something out. Peter, Annie, and Michelle then went to the kitchen to talk and figure out what to do next. Michelle stated that she was ready to move to her own studio tomorrow, even though she wasn't entirely pleased with that option. 
However, she didn't want to stay in the same apartment with her father and his wife either. After Indy's outburst, she felt a sharp dislike for her. But to everyone's surprise, and he didn't agree with Michelle. Peter, how do you envision this? I mean Michelle's life separated from you. This goes against the law. She should be with her parents. If the neighbors find out she's alone in the apartment, they might call the police and you'll have more problems. Well, I really don't know. Peter hesitated, but there's not enough space for everyone. Yes, you're right. We need to come up with something, but the option you're suggesting is not the best for Michelle. She's essentially still a child and will be sleeping alone. What if someone scares her or finds out there's a girl living alone in the apartment and takes advantage of that? How will you feel then? I'm worried about both of you. Yes, I think you're right, Peter nodded. I suggest we rent out this apartment and get Michelle a studio. And with the money we make, rent a three-bedroom place for all of us. And he proposed. Michelle frowned. Since when did her dad's wife become so concerned about her fate? She must want to mend her relationship with her husband through Michelle. Well, that won't work. And maybe you could ask me how I want to live, or is that not necessary? Maybe I should just leave, and you can figure it out yourselves. Michelle, stop it. It's been a while since her father heard his daughter speak to him so snappishly. Do I even have a say? I'll be 16 in a few months, by the way. Then there won't be any problems at all. If I live alone, everything will be legal. For now, I'll just avoid interacting with the neighbors too much, but I want to live on my own. I'll go to my apartment tomorrow, tidy it up, and move there immediately. Dad, did you forget? You suggested this option yourself, and you're right. It will be better this way. Here, I'm just getting in your and any's way. Right now, emotions won't help us decide anything, but I agree. Any is saying the right things. I suggest we part ways for now and think until tomorrow. I don't have the energy anymore. Today was a tough work day. Michelle nodded, but as soon as she woke up, she immediately informed Peter and his wife that she was packing her things and leaving soon. Dad, I acted like a child when I said I was afraid to move into my own apartment. My friends will be so envious when they find out I'm living apart from my parents, and it would be better for you if I moved out. You and Annie must have missed each other, wanting to spend time alone, and here I am. Besides, we've already gone through all this trouble just for me to live on my own. Remember how difficult it was with Mom, selling our apartment and finding separate housing? Michelle, I even suggested exchanging apartments and moving to your studio, but you remember, it was a critical situation back then. I didn't have time to think. And yesterday, when you went to sleep, Annie told me that you two had been conflicting behind my back from the very beginning. Now she feels guilty about it towards you and hopes that you two can become friends. Oh, Dad, we've already been through all this. The kind stepmother and the rebellious teenager. But have you ever thought about why Annie suddenly changed so much? It's probably just another one of her plans. Michelle, she was wrong to compete with you, my child. Now she realizes that and has admitted it, which I'm very glad about. I want you both to learn to get along, because you both mean a lot to me. Well, that's unlikely. Michelle stubbornly retorted. I said how much it would mean to me, and how comfortable it would be for me. But, in any case, I agree with my wife that it's too early for you to live on your own. God forbid something happens to you, I'll never forgive myself for that. So, here's the decision. We're moving to a three-bedroom apartment, and we'll rent out these studios. The daughter wanted to say something, but Peter didn't bother to listen. He quickly kissed Michelle on the forehead and left the apartment. The girl stamped her foot. What's going on? Why is he treating her as if she's still a little child? She's almost 16 already, but it seems like no one is planning to take her opinion into account. Mom, essentially, never paid attention to her. She was only interested in Todd. Dad does whatever his beloved Annie says. When will Michelle be able to live the way she wants? Hurt, the girl almost cried, but then Annie came out of the bedroom with the little girl. Michelle turned away and went to the kitchen, and unfortunately, the woman and her daughter followed her. Annie, apparently not noticing Michelle's mood, smiled, wished her a good morning, and asked for porridge for the little girl. The girl reluctantly fulfilled the request, 
and only after Annie thanked her for it did Michelle angrily pout. The woman understood that the girl wasn't in a good mood. She didn't try to find out the reasons behind her bad mood. By that time, Annie had already started seeing a psychologist, who helped her better understand the situation at home and see her stepdaughter with different eyes. Now the woman was prepared for her outbursts and mood swings. Nevertheless, Michelle continued to harbor anger towards her father's wife. She herself didn't understand the reasons behind her own hatred, as she could clearly see that Annie was no longer hostile towards her, but the girl was driven by her emotions. After Peter's wife and daughter went to their bedroom, Michelle began to develop a plan to make her stepmother's life miserable. The first idea that the girl latched onto was to reconcile her mother and father. Such an arrangement would set everything right. Megan, with her future child, would get rid of the status of being abandoned and would stop associating with criminals, while Peter would break up with his annoying wife and live with Michelle and her mother. The girl decided, without delay, to go to Megan to have a talk with her. Daughter, why no call? I just got back from the store. You might not have caught me at home. Sorry, Mom, I want to talk to you. And how do you feel about getting back together with Dad? An unexpected question. Megan was surprised. Why suddenly bring this up? Well, I would like for you two to live together again. I see. Are you sure? Look. You might end up getting a hard time from your dad and his wife later on. Well, okay, your assistance will come in handy here. I'll tell you what I'll need from you. On that day, Michelle stayed with her mother until evening. While they talked, they tidied up the house and prepared dinner. During this time, Megan and her daughter outlined their plan of action. Before that, they had discussed a couple of other options. Michelle suggested setting up her stepmother in front of her dad. However, Megan rejected her plan, explaining that dealing with adult women requires a subtle, delicate approach, as being exposed is a real risk. In the end, mother and daughter decided that Michelle would get closer to her stepmother, who would then relax, allowing them to gradually expose her true nature. In this scenario, Megan would stand out favorably against the scheming Annie. Michelle promised to report everything that would happen between Peter and his wife. However, she herself thought that plotting schemes against her father and Annie was distasteful. She didn't want to see them together, but she also found these manipulative methods unpleasant. Ultimately, she thought about her younger stepsister, who needed a father, but she quickly dismissed this thought, soothing her conscience by acknowledging that she herself needed her father no less. When Michelle returned to the apartment, she could hear voices not only from her dad and Annie, but also from a third person. She walked into the kitchen during the midst of a conversation about real estate between Peter, his wife, and the realtor, Joanna. So, you're deciding where and how I'm going to live without me. And what if I say I won't rent out my apartment to just anyone? I don't want to live there later with some dirty mess. And anyway, I'm going to move there myself soon. Michelle stubbornly asserted. Daughter, how about starting with a greeting? Hi, Michelle forced a smile and waved to Joanna. Hello, Michelle. Joanna responded, I'll find good tenants, don't worry. We won't rent your apartment to just anyone, but without the rent money, your dad can't afford a three-bedroom rental. And if we rent out both your apartment and his, the amount raised will more than cover the monthly expenses for your new place. You can save this difference and use it later to renovate your studio after the tenants move out. So, I understand the decision has been made, and I have nothing more to do here. Michelle turned around to leave the room. Wait, I haven't told you everything. A little more, and Peter would have completely lost his temper, but his wife gently placed her hand on his shoulder, which somewhat calmed him down. He let his daughter go to the living room. Sitting on the couch, the girl closed her eyes. How all of this infuriated her. No one, absolutely no one thinks about how she feels and what she wants. In that moment, Michelle thought that she had doubted the correctness of their plan with her mom to bring her father back into their family. Megan would never allow Peter to behave so rudely with his daughter. That night, Michelle couldn't sleep for a long time. Her mom wanted her to pretend to be a friend to Annie. But how was that possible when she despised her so much? Michelle wasn't sure if she could pull off this act convincingly enough for her dad and his wife to believe. But if she had to, she would. 
She would try very hard. The next morning, as soon as Michelle got out of bed, she heard Annie talking to her dad. Peter was saying that his daughter had crossed a line and started being rude even to outsiders. His wife, on the other hand, responded that such behavior was quite normal for a teenager, especially considering how rapidly Michelle's life was changing. Oh, that Annie, with such a friend, who needs enemies? How does she manage to pretend to be such a sweet and caring stepmother for so long? Well, never mind, soon, that woman would surely slip up, and then Michelle would help her dad be there in that moment and understand everything. Despite the turmoil of negative emotions inside her, she managed to pull herself together, walked into the kitchen with a smile, wished everyone a good morning, and even apologized for her behavior the previous day. Michelle was particularly remorseful about having spoken rudely in the presence of a stranger. I'm glad you acknowledged your mistake. Peter smiled, but it's all right. We all understand you. The situation isn't the simplest. Let's close this topic and talk about something pleasant. Today, we're going to see a great apartment that Joanna offered us yesterday. Are you coming with us? Of course, Dad. Finally, you decided to ask for my opinion about the housing. Oops, sorry, Dad. I've been on edge lately. Peter frowned at first, but after another apology, he didn't escalate the situation further. Annie had explained a lot about her daughter's behavior and now he was trying to treat Michelle more leniently. Michelle, don't stand in the way. Have a seat. I'll make you some tea. I made pancakes for breakfast. Help yourself. And he tried to ease the tension and give Peter more time to cool down. Michelle almost made a snarky remark again, but remembered her agreement with her mom just in time and simply thanked the woman. As soon as she finished her pancakes and tea, she and her dad began to get ready to inspect the apartment they were planning to move into. Annie stayed home with the little one, saying that she fully trusted her husband and his elder daughter's choice. At that moment, Michelle was thinking about how difficult her role was. Instead of forcing that silly smile, she wanted to take her stepmother and kick her out of the house. When the girl and her father got into the car, Michelle decided to start implementing the next part of their strategy with her mom. She began to admire Megan's behavior. She recounted how she had visited her the day before and once again saw the sacrifices her mother had made for her. Michelle emphasized the difficult conditions of the pregnant woman's life. She concluded her monologue by expressing her pity for her mom and her desire to help her. Peter listened to his daughter in silence. After all, the woman herself had created this situation by bringing a criminal home and not believing her daughter when he started harassing her. But he didn't say anything aloud, not wanting to argue with Michelle again. The apartment that Joanna had found for them was liked by everyone. Peter appreciated the fresh renovation, the furnished children's room, and the great neighborhood where the potential housing was located. Michelle liked her room and the fact that it was close to school and her mom. Father and daughter decided not to consider other options and immediately sign all the necessary rental documents. After moving into the new place, Michelle continued to pretend that she was getting along with Annie. She helped with cleaning, cooking, occasionally took her younger stepsister for a walk, and tried to be kind and friendly with her stepmother. At the same time, she often visited her mom, to whom she reported on the family situation each time. Thus. Megan was aware of all the disagreements, misunderstandings, and plans of her ex-husband and his current wife. Peter also visited the woman to help her with repairs each time. Megan tried to prolong his stay, but he always hurried back home. From this, his ex-wife realized more and more that it was unlikely she could win Peter back. However, she wasn't accustomed to losing, so she made repeated unsuccessful attempts to reconnect with her former husband. And so, they lived like this for six months and were now preparing to celebrate Michelle's birthday. The girl really wanted to spend her special day with both her mom and dad. It was decided that in the first half of the day, she would celebrate her birthday with her dad, his wife, and her younger stepsister. In the evening, Peter would take the birthday girl to her mother, who was also preparing a celebration. On that morning, Michelle woke up in a good mood. She even thought that the decision to live together wasn't the worst idea. At least here she had her own separate room, although living with a family with a little child was still a bit challenging. 
However, Michelle had everything she needed for a good night's sleep and studying. Plus, the school was very close by. To be honest, life with her stepmother had become less of a bother. Annie had become more confident and wiser. More and more often, the woman invited the girl to the kitchen just to chat over a cup of tea. Surprisingly, Michelle found this interaction pleasant. Therefore, the agreement with her mother about getting her dad back was weighing heavily on her. Seeing that Michelle was awake, and he congratulated the girl on her birthday. So, are we heading to a cafe? The girl asked Peter's wife. Plans have changed a bit. And he replied with a heavy sigh. The little one had a fever during the night, so my daughter and I will stay home. Wouldn't it be easier to just move the celebration here then? Your dad thought the same thing. And he winked. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Annie smiled and stepped back, allowing Michelle to go ahead. When the girl opened the door, a colorful cloud of balloons rushed into the apartment, followed by a huge bouquet of Michelle's favorite flowers. Behind them, she saw her dad holding a large cake and smiling. He hugged his daughter and wished her a happy birthday. Wow, Michelle clapped her hands in delight. Daddy, Annie, thank you so much. I actually prefer having this celebration at home more than at a cafe. Let's go to the kitchen and have some cake. As soon as Michelle started pouring tea, her father and Annie walked into the room with a conspiratorial look on their faces. Annie reached behind her back and brought out a large box with a pink bow, handing it over to Michelle with a sense of ceremony. The girl untied the ribbon eagerly. When she lifted the lid, she found numerous small boxes inside each containing girlish gifts such as hairpin sets, lip gloss, and various pleasantly scented skincare and hair care products. Michelle was delighted with such a thoughtful present. In gratitude, she hugged Annie and her father. After celebrating her birthday at home, Peter and Michelle headed over to Megan's for the continuation of the celebration. Megan had prepared everything in advance, set the table, and was eagerly awaiting the guests. Despite her large belly, she remained very active and seemed to effortlessly take care of the guests, refilling empty plates with food and topping up drinks. Michelle noted that everything her mom had prepared was as delicious as ever. Later on, the girl sat with her parents, reminiscing about her childhood. At that moment, Annie called Peter and urgently asked him to bring some medicine. It turned out that a doctor had arrived to see the little one after Michelle and Peter had left. The doctor had noted the baby's poor condition and suggested that Andy and Peter take her to the hospital. And he promised to ensure proper care for the child at home, and the doctor agreed to leave the baby at home on the condition that they immediately purchase all the necessary medications. So, Annie had to disturb her husband. He promptly prepared to go home. At first, Michelle decided to leave with him. But her father explained that it wouldn't be right considering Megan had put so much effort into the celebration. He apologized and left the apartment. Megan closed the door behind him and immediately began questioning her daughter about any new developments in the family. With reluctance, Michelle shared the news of the younger sister's illness. The girl's mother fell silent for a moment and then suggested that it was time to change the strategy. She said they should proceed as Michelle herself had proposed provoking Annie into a confrontation. No, mom, this is going too far. Why? Weren't you the one who initially wanted to drive a wedge between them? Megan asked, surprised. You know, I've been thinking. You can't build happiness on someone else's misery. Oh, listen to you talk. But nobody is concerned about my happiness. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Michelle and Megan thought it might be Peter returning for some reason. But no, it wasn't him behind the door. Seeing the man who had arrived, Megan was taken aback but quickly regained her composure and coldly said, Todd, why have you come? My dear, we haven't seen each other for so long. My love, you were waiting for me, weren't you? No one's been waiting for you, except maybe your wife. Well, I'm not married anymore. The man smiled. I couldn't forget you and left Natalie. Really? After nearly a year? Yes, I've realized a lot. The man said, pushing Megan away roughly, and now I'm going to live with you, got it. I'm the father of your child, so kindly close the door and come to the room. Todd entered the living room, saw the generously set table, took a seat on an available chair, pulled the nearest dish towards him, and greedily started eating. Michelle jumped up from her seat and rushed to her mother. What's happening here? 
Why did he come? Mom, the girl asked, alarmed. I'll be living with your mother now, so get used to it. Both of you, quickly sit at the table. Absolutely not. Michelle replied and turned to leave, but Todd intercepted her and blocked her path. Didn't I tell you to sit at the table? Do it now. Michelle had to comply and sit on the nearest chair. She wanted to pour herself some water, but her hands were shaking. So she just put the glass back down and watched as the man devoured everything within his reach. Megan, who was looking bewilderedly at her daughter and then at her former partner, decided that only by playing along would she give her daughter a chance to leave. Todd, of course, I've been waiting for you. After all, you're the father of my child. I hoped you'd come to your senses and return. My ex-husband pressured me and forced me to exchange apartments. Megan pretended to sigh sadly. I apologize that we have to live in such conditions. Well, it's not like I have much choice now. Some very unpleasant guys are trying to find me, so I'll stay here for now. Sure, Todd, but the apartment is a bit small for three people. Michelle will have to go to her father's and we'll live together. Megan smiled. That's not advisable, the man said. She knows too much now. Look at her. Who is she going to tell about you, her dad? She's not on good terms with him since we started living together. She's on our side. Michelle nodded hesitantly. How interesting. I'll listen to that story another time. Todd smirked. For now, let her go wherever she wants. The girl quickly grabbed her bag and dashed out of the house. Only when she was a good distance away did she feel safe. She took her phone out of her pocket and dialed her father's number. As soon as she heard his familiar voice, tears streamed down her face. Daddy, the girl sobbed and couldn't say anything more. Michelle, why are you crying? What happened? Everything's bad, Dad. Where are you? At the bus stop near Mom's place. Stay there. I'm coming out. About five minutes later, Peter pulled up to Michelle. She quickly got into the car and told her father everything. Peter realized that Todd had some powerful backing. When he talked to him at Megan's place, Todd seemed weak and cowardly. So why was he suddenly acting so audacious? But there was no time for contemplation. Decisive action was needed. Making sure his daughter was safe and unharmed, he drove her home. When they arrived at the apartment complex, he stopped the car and called a police acquaintance. He explained everything that had happened. The police officer promised to gather the necessary information about Todd and call back. Then Peter dialed Megan's number. The woman answered the call right away, but her speech was odd, with long pauses. Megan, what's going on with you? Is Todd forcing you to drink alcohol? You're expecting a child, you taunt. What's it to you about me and my child? The woman said bitterly, you went to your wife, and that's what started all this. Now I have to deal with it myself. Megan wanted to say more, but the connection inexplicably cut off. Dad, what's happening with mom? Michelle asked worriedly. Let's call the police, dad. I'll handle that once I get you home. I'm not going anywhere. The girl insisted stubbornly. I'm afraid for mom and I want to help her. Michelle, can't you understand that I can't risk you? While we argue here, your mother is in danger. It will be much easier for me to think and act rationally if I don't have to worry about you as well. Michelle nodded reluctantly. Back at her father's apartment, she was finally able to calm down, sharing everything with Annie. She explained in detail what had happened, expressing her deep concern for her pregnant mother. Annie didn't interrupt her. She put herself in Michelle's shoes and realized that what she needed right now was a friendly shoulder to lean on. So, as soon as Michelle finished her account, Annie simply hugged her. There was nothing more she could do to help at the moment. Meanwhile, Peter was already on his way to Megan. Before arriving, he managed to call the same acquaintance again to find out what events had triggered Todd's drastic change in behavior. It turned out that Todd had stolen something from an influential person and was now being hunted down. Desperate to save himself, he was ready to do anything, which led him to seek refuge with the pregnant woman, assuming her sensitive condition would provide a shield in case of danger. However, the police officer doubted that his pursuers would be easily deterred. Thus, Megan was facing a real threat, whether from Todd or from those he had crossed. Peter arranged to meet up with his friend, 
who had provided him with this information, at the front of his ex-wife's apartment building. When the two men entered the building and reached the appropriate floor, they found Megan's apartment door wide open. The living room, where they had recently celebrated Michelle's birthday, was in a dreadful state. The table was overturned. Broken dishes and glasses were strewn around. As they searched the other rooms, tension grew. Peter clenched his fists tightly when he saw his ex-wife's broken phone and drops of blood in the bathroom. His friend instructed him not to touch anything in the room and called for backup. While they waited for the police to arrive, they decided to interview the neighbors. The residents of the same floor were either not home or too frightened by the chaos caused by Megan to open their doors. So, Peter and his friend descended to the floor below. There, luck was on their side. After knocking on the door of the apartment directly beneath Megan's, they heard shuffling footsteps. Who's there? A frail voice reached them from behind the door. Police. Peter's friend held up his badge for the peephole inspection. Oh, how glad I am to see you, said the apartment's inhabitant, opening the door. I don't know what was happening to me. Well, that's exactly why we're here, the police officer stated. Please tell us what you heard. Oh, there was such a commotion. This apartment is generally unpleasant. A woman of questionable reputation lives there. She moved in a few months ago. Why do you say questionable reputation? Peter asked in surprise. It's not hard to figure out. She's pregnant. And different men come to her place. One seems to be doing repairs. Whenever he shows up, he immediately starts drilling and hammering. Even my patience has its limits. And today, a new one appeared. Her daughter came to visit her earlier today. She dashed out there like she'd been scalded when the man arrived. And after that, all the chaos began. While the girl was there, the mother was behaving herself. But as soon as the girl left, she started kicking the man out. And he began shouting that he wouldn't leave because he's the father of her child. And what happened after that? The old lady held her head, stomping, yelling, and blows. I think she was running away from him, and he caught up with her probably beat her. As a woman, of course, I feel sorry for her. Then everything fell silent, and the ambulance arrived. The woman was unconscious. The men thanked the elderly lady. Once outside, they met the police officers who had just arrived at the scene. They managed to find out which hospital Peter's ex-wife had been taken to. After making the call, the men learned that Megan had arrived at the hospital in an unconscious state with various injuries, including a cranial one. Her condition was critical, necessitating an emergency caserine section. The baby's condition was deemed satisfactory by medical professionals. Peter was consumed by anger. Todd didn't venture far and observed everything happening from a distance. He positioned himself where he couldn't be easily spotted behind the trees. However, he had a clear view of the entrance and the surrounding area. Todd watched as Megan's ex-husband bid farewell to the police officer and drove away. Meanwhile, Peter headed back home. He had a difficult conversation awaiting him with Michelle. Initially, he had considered going to the hospital to be with Megan, but what could he do there? His ex-wife was unconscious, and the fate of her newborn son, fathered by that criminal, wasn't his immediate concern. Right now, he had to figure out how to break the news to Michelle about her mother. At first, Peter contemplated withholding the information until Megan regained consciousness. But then he pondered what if she never did. So, he decided to approach Michelle with the truth, just with a bit of caution. However, upon entering the apartment, he was met by his wife, who informed him that Michelle had been so exhausted by the day's events that she had fallen asleep long ago. And he listened attentively to the sorrowful turn of events. She felt deeply sorry for Peter's ex-wife, her child, and Michelle. It's a difficult situation. If the newborn's health turns out to be fine, they'll discharge him. For now, while his mother is in poor condition, the baby will be sent to a child care facility and he'll be all alone there. And his voice quivered. Peter, shall we take him in temporarily? Any, are you out of your mind? We have our own little child to care for. I understand where you're coming from. You're a mother yourself and maternal instincts are kicking in. But right now, you're proposing this out of emotion. Once you calm down, you'll realize that if I fulfill your request, it will make things difficult for everyone. Yes, my dear, you're probably right. Let's go to bed. It's been a heavy day for all of us. 
The next morning, Peter called the hospital. Maiden's condition remained unchanged, and the baby was doing well. This meant that the baby could stay at the facility for only a week. After that, he would be transferred to an orphanage, just as Annie had mentioned. When Peter contacted his acquaintance, the police officer, he learned that Todd had not been located yet. The authorities had visited Todd's wife, but he had left her several months ago, and he hadn't returned to that apartment since. Peter's thoughts drifted back to the baby, soon to be discharged. He couldn't help but feel sorry for the newborn, yet the child was entirely unfamiliar to him. He was the son of his ex-wife and the man he deemed a societal reject. What could possibly become of this child with such genes? Likely nothing good. Annie had suggested taking the baby in temporarily, but for how long, and what would they do if Megan didn't improve, their family was just starting to settle down. Michelle's relationship with his wife had improved somewhat. However, this newfound harmony was fragile and easily disrupted by even minor factors. Having another small child in the house would bring massive changes affecting everyone. No, Peter wouldn't involve himself in such matters. He couldn't provide shelter to everyone in need. Without delay, Peter decided to have the conversation with Michelle. As soon as she emerged from her room, he chose to lay out everything. My dear, I'd like to have a talk with you. Of course, I was coming to see you too, Michelle responded. Well, how are things? How's mom? It's not as good as we'd hoped and Peter proceeded to tell his daughter about the previous day's events, without the necessary details that might disturb her. He remained truthful, yet didn't give her false hope. Ultimately, the doctor's comforting prognoses regarding Megan's condition might not hold true, so Peter aimed to prepare Michelle for any outcome. Dad, will they let me visit Mom in the hospital? Tears welled up in Michelle's eyes. Not for now only when she's transferred from the intensive care unit to a regular room. What about my little brother, who's taking care of him now? Babies are so helpless, they need so much. After a month of living with her father and his new family, Michelle had began to understand such matters. The hospital staff is taking good care of him right now. In a week, he'll be transferred to an orphanage. As soon as your mom recovers, she'll be able to take him from there. But for now, He'll be all alone there. Dad, I don't want that. Let's take him with us. Please, just for a while. Until mom gets better. Peter rolled his eyes. I would take care of him myself. Michelle exclaimed. I would do everything for him. Yes, dear. Changing diapers and losing sleep at night due to a baby's crying is every 15-year-old girl's dream. That's it. I don't want to talk about this anymore. We won't be taking this child in. End of discussion. With these words, Peter left the living room. Entering the bedroom and seeing his wife's melancholic expression, he immediately understood that she had overheard their conversation with Michelle. It wasn't very tactful, and he said softly, Well, it happened as it did. We talked about this yesterday. Everything needed to be set straight, especially with our daughter. And he sighed sadly, Okay, it's a pity, of course, that you're so firm, but I understand you. No one else discussed the newborn with Peter. However, the women of the family often broached the topic. Both Annie and Michelle wanted to help the tiny baby in some way. A couple of days later, Megan regained consciousness, but her condition was far from normal. After discharge, her son was sent to the orphanage after all. The doctors didn't permit anyone to visit her yet. After learning this news, Annie entered Michelle's room closed the door behind her, and began to speak softly. I found out where they transferred your little brother. Maybe we can go see him, take some baby items along. Yes, of course, let's go. Michelle initially spoke loudly due to her excitement, but then caught herself and lowered her voice. Great. And he smiled. I've already arranged it. They'll let us see him briefly, but your dad shouldn't know about it. Let's get dressed and leave, as if we're going for a walk with your little sister. We'll stop by a store on the way, get the necessary things for the baby, and go straight there. Michelle clapped her hands and jumped in joy. Before they were allowed to see the baby, the institutions had offered a brief orientation. She prohibited Annie and Michelle from holding the newborn for long periods, so as not to accustom him to it, since the staff wouldn't be able to provide him with the same attention. It would only make things worse for him. 
the visitors nodded somberly. When the head of the institution led them into the appropriate room, they saw several sleeping babies in their cribs. If before coming here, Michelle had been absolutely certain that she would instantly recognize her brother, after all, he was her own blood. Now that certainty vanished. The infants only differed in size. Some were taller, others a bit chubbier, but otherwise, they all looked the same. Michelle looked questioningly at the institution's head. She was led to the crib by the window and reminded of the rules. She shouldn't linger for too long. She gazed at her brother, and to her surprise, she realized she felt utterly indifferent toward him. He was a baby, and that was that. Yes, she pitied him for being here without his mother, but she didn't experience any special sisterly emotions toward him. In contrast, Annie unexpectedly found herself overwhelmed by emotions. Tears welled up in her eyes at the sight of the baby. She gently caressed him, held his little hand, and didn't stop talking to him. She told him how handsome and strong he was, how his mother would be here for him soon. He just needed to wait a little, and he hadn't anticipated her maternal instinct to shine so brightly for someone else's child. When the visitors left the establishment, both of them remained silent. Michelle couldn't understand why she didn't feel any familial emotions towards her little brother. Meanwhile, Annie was contemplating the fact that if it hadn't been for Peter's decision, she would have taken the baby without any hesitation. But it's all right. Megan is recovering now, and soon she'll regain her strength and be ready to come for the child herself. Annie, I'm truly grateful to you for our visit. I saw him and cleared up a lot for myself, Michelle said. Agree, he's adorable. Annie smiled. Yes, nodded Michelle. I've just realized that dad was right, for now. It's better for the baby to stay here. Since then, Annie and Michelle started to visit the little one at the orphanage periodically. During one of these visits, they were unpleasantly surprised. When the visitors approached the headmistress, she didn't lead them to the baby's room as usual. Instead, she told them that the child had been taken away. How could they take him away if the only relative he has besides his mother is in the hospital? Michelle questioned. Well, I didn't say it was his mother who took him, the headmistress calmly replied. His father took him. The boy doesn't have a father. The head of the children's home let out a deep sigh and continued with irritation. I told you that the father took the child. He proved his paternity in court and legally took his son. So, there's no point in coming here anymore. We'll have to deal with this man regarding the child. It's him, Cod, who took my brother. I just don't understand why he's bothering with the baby now," Michelle said in confusion. Yes, it can only be him, his biological father, Annie agreed. Michelle, we'll have to tell your dad everything. We can't handle this on our own. Let's not do that. Todd didn't take him just for no reason. He clearly has a plan. And if mom's ex-lover sees that we're worried about the baby, he'll definitely use it to his advantage. Maybe you're right, Michelle. Then let's pretend we're not aware of all these events. At least if this Todd is taking good care of the little one. As they had anticipated, the biological father of the child made himself known very soon. Somehow, he managed to get Peter's number and called him. He told Peter that if Megan's ex-husband didn't want to meet with him, the baby would suffer the consequences. Peter wasn't thrilled about being dragged into this child's adventure. He was already tired of the fact that first Annie and Michelle, and now this criminal, were trying to force some connection with this baby onto him. Peter had his hands full with his two daughters, but he couldn't condemn the innocent little one to suffering. So, with reluctance, he agreed to meet Todd. Todd was pleased and demanded that absolutely no one, especially the police, knew about their arrangement. Otherwise, he threatened to harm not only his son, but also Michelle for good measure. And once again, Peter was forced to agree to Todd's terms. This had become the last straw. Peter called a friend of his in the police force and demanded an explanation. How could his acquaintance and his colleagues not have caught the criminal who had nearly killed his ex-wife over an extended period? Moreover, they had handed over the newborn baby to him. Peter, please calm down. The only grounds to arrest this dog right now would be a statement from Megan. Well, then let her ride it. Peter was almost shouting. She can't ride it. Your ex-wife doesn't remember anything from recent events. Not even that she was pregnant. Come on, 
Seriously, I thought that only happened in TV shows. As you can see, it's not just on TV. Megan hit her head severely, suffered brain damage, and as a result, this is what happened. The prognosis is optimistic. Her memory should recover, but for that, she needs complete rest and time, which we currently don't have, Peter remarked. Why are you telling me this just now? Because I just found out myself. I'm not informed about all the changes from the hospital. Then I don't understand how this Todd could simply walk into the orphanage and take the baby. Not just like that. He had to go to court and undergo a DNA test. Naturally, the analysis showed that Todd is the father. That's why they gave him his son. If Todd hadn't shown up, the baby would have stayed in the orphanage until Megan claimed him. So, the fact that Todd is a criminal didn't stop the authorities from giving him the child. No, he hasn't been in trouble for a long time. He was rehabilitated for his old crimes and is considered clean. Todd came to the institution, said he was the child's mother's partner and is the father. He proved it quickly. Quickly because they accommodated him due to the complicated situation. And that's it. Todd became the legitimate parent of the baby. Tell me this, Peter. Are you going to the meeting? I have to. I feel sorry for the child. Besides, this criminal mentioned that Michelle will be bothered. I won't let him get away with that. I'll talk to him man to man. All right, just be sensible there. With that kind of attitude, you might do something reckless. Maybe I should come with you. No, thanks, Peter declined. Todd specifically said I should come alone. And he also mentioned the police, by the way. I don't want him to carry out his threats concerning the baby, especially not against Michelle. And I definitely won't do anything foolish. You know me. I'm fine in terms of my nervous system and self-control. The meeting was scheduled for the evening of the same day. When Peter was getting ready to leave the house, Michelle, as if sensing that her father was in danger, approached him and asked where he was headed. I urgently need to meet someone for work. I'll go quickly, have a talk, and be back home. I want to go with you, Michelle said. Michelle was starting to suspect who her father was going to meet at such a late hour for work-related matters. No, sweetheart, this is a very serious meeting. Besides, I talked to someone, and they told me that there's been an increase in crime in our area. So, I'm asking you not to go anywhere for the next few days, except school and home. Dad, come on, this is going too far. I've said what I had to. I really hope you'll listen to me. It's all for your own good. Okay, the girl replied sadly. Well then then, Peter potted her on the head and left the apartment. For a while, Michelle stood in the corridor, thinking about Todd. She was almost certain that her father had gone to meet him. Anxiety gnawed at her due to her concerns for her father and her little brother. Meanwhile, Peter arrived at the location where Todd had suggested they meet. From a distance, he spotted the guy and decided to assess the situation before approaching him. Peter carefully surveyed the surroundings. Everything seemed calm, with no other suspicious individuals nearby. Where's the baby? Peter asked. Well, you're quite funny. I'm not going to drag the baby here with me. He's fine. He's in good hands. Jay Wright, what did you want to talk to me about? It's simple. Todd smirked. I need money. Me too. Speak specifically about what you need from me. I'll give you the child you give me the money. Are you serious? What am I supposed to pay you for? Peter now smirked himself. Why did you even decide to approach me? Megan had a lot of men after me. Choose someone more caring, soft, and bother them. I have my own matters. Your offer doesn't interest me. Peter bluffed. Fear appeared on Todd's face at first, but he quickly composed himself. If you weren't interested in this child, you would have ignored my call. You'd be at home with your family, watching TV and having tea, rather than wandering the streets. In any case, I'm telling you, you're barking up the wrong tree. Peter kept his tone calm as best as he could. Enough already. Leave the baby alone. And if you continue to threaten my daughter, you'll have more trouble than you can handle. I guarantee you'll end up in the same hospital as Megan but with a more serious diagnosis. Are you trying to intimidate me? Todd laughed, but it sounded overly forced. You're not a millionaire, but you're not Poe either. Look at all the real estate you're not using. Just sell one of your apartments. 
and if you try to attack me or report me, you'll only harm yourself and your children. I have good connections, including in the police. I think you've figured that out already. Thanks for the enticing offer. I'll think about it, Peter said. Turning around, he quickly walked away. He returned to his apartment closer to midnight. His wife and younger daughter had gone to bed without waiting for his return, but Michelle was sitting in the living room, waiting for her father. Hearing the sound of the lock, she rushed to the hallway. Sweetie, what are you doing? Peter asked in surprise, embracing Michelle. Daddy, I was so worried about you. What if Todd did something to you? It's very dangerous. So you guessed. The man sighed. Yes, tell me, how did it go? Is my brother with him already? Why does he want him? It's simple. Todd decided to blackmail me and your mother with the child to get money out of me. How do such people even exist? First, he beats a pregnant woman. Now he threatens harm to his own child. Peter hesitated and quickly looked at his daughter, but his words only vocalized what she already understood. And how much is he asking for? Michelle, despite being very concerned for her little brother from her father, tried to hold herself together. This scumbag wants me to sell your apartment and give him the money, but he won't get it. With people like him, one payment won't satisfy them. As soon as he sees my interest, he'll keep shaking down for more money. Michelle, I think it's best for you to leave this city, at least for a while. Dad, but I'm still worried about mom and my brother. Michelle, you won't help anything by staying here. I'll deal with Todd. I just want to play it safe by sending you away. And besides, I have a good plan. I'll expose this criminal fully, in a way that no connections will help him anymore. Michelle took a deep breath as if to launch into a long emotional speech, but in the end, she just let out a sigh. She decided it was better to cool down and contemplate what her dad had said. She could see clearly that he was making wise and thoughtful decisions. By the next morning, Peter had already started implementing his plan to deal with Todd. He called the realtor Joanna and proposed a meeting. He explained his idea of how to buy time and gather information about Megan's former partner to finally send him to jail. Joanna liked Peter's plan and decided to participate. They showed up together for the next meeting with Todd. So, what have you decided? The guy got straight to the point. You'll get your money, Peter said. However, I can't get it quickly. We've put Michelle's apartment up for sale, and we've even found a buyer, but they're asking for one to two months to complete the transaction. Well, no, I gave you a week. Somehow you'll manage within that time frame. Not my problem. Todd, it's in your interest. Joanna chimed in. The buyer who's interested in the apartment is willing to pay 20% more than we expected. And who exactly are you? The guy smirked. My name is Joanna. I'm a realtor. Peter asked me to handle the sale of the studio apartment. He said the deal involves you directly. Well, what's the surprise you have for me, realtor? The guy pursed his lips, audaciously glancing at Joanna. I'm not sure if this will surprise you, but I think you'll definitely like it. The woman pulled a pen out of her purse, grabbed a napkin, and wrote down an amount. She showed it to Todd, whose eyes lit up. The guy hadn't expected to get so much out of this simpleton. All right, you've convinced me. Great, Joanna said. Then we can solidify our agreement by signing some papers in my office. Okay, but make sure if you're plotting anything against me. Todd narrowed his eyes. You two will regret it. Yeah, yeah, you've mentioned your police connections, Peter continued in a bored tone. But I'm not risking my daughter, so I have no plans to deceive you. Everyone was satisfied with the outcome of this meeting. Todd was thrilled that he could get much more than he had planned, and he was pleased to meet a strong, attractive woman like Joanna. He had a weakness for the opposite sex, especially those who could be useful to him. This woman clearly fell into that category. Peter and Joanna were simply elated. Everything was going exactly as they wanted. When the three of them met again the next morning at the realtor's office, Todd stared at Joanna with his mouth agape. She was dressed in a stunning outfit that accentuated her figure, and her hair was beautifully styled. From Todd's gaze, she could tell her preparations hadn't been in vain. The goal had been achieved. And when all the necessary documents were signed and Peter left the office, 
Joanna continued to play her assigned role. To be honest, Cod, you've piqued my interest. I'm quite taken by your type of man, strong, determined, knowing what you want, and capable of real action. Well, yay, that's me, the guy beamed. Maybe we should go somewhere and celebrate the deal that's about to make me quite wealthy. I was starting to think you wouldn't suggest it. Joanna looked at her date sheepishly from beneath lowered lashes. Todd burst into laughter. Well, that's just perfect. Wait for me in the car, please. I'll finish up here and come out. Sure, I'm ready to wait for you forever. Todd replied, deciding to test the waters right away. So, what's your relationship with Peter, who's about to hand over a decent sum to me? With Peter, purely business, Joanna smiled. I helped him purchase the very studio he's selling now. Why do you ask? Are you jealous of him? Peter isn't my type at all, but you I'm quite fond of. Oh my, you're quite something. I'm impressed by you. Since then, Joanna spent a lot of time with Todd. They made plans for the future and discussed various schemes they could pull off. Meanwhile, the guy, completely relaxed in the presence of the captivating woman, could sometimes blabber too much. He would open up and share stories of his past exploits. Joanna would demonstratively admire his business acumen. Todd had grown so trusting of Joanna that he even agreed to hire a nanny for the baby based on her recommendation. During this time, Megan's condition improved to the point where she was discharged from the hospital. Her memory gradually recovered, but there were still some lingering issues. Daughter, you've changed so much recently. You've become so beautiful. Clearly, Daddy's influence is benefiting you, but I'm getting discharged soon, which means you can move back into my apartment, her mother said. Mom, I'm leaving. I get accepted into a prestigious university in Miami. They'll provide me with dormitory accommodation. Oh, and you didn't even consult with me. Well, well, didn't expect this from you. Megan froze and placed her hands on her abdomen. What happened? Michelle looked at her mother with concern. I was pregnant, but now I'm not. What happened to my baby? Mom, you had a caserine section. The baby is fine, but it's better for dad to tell you about my brother. Let's go to him. Peter, but why him? Well. You'll find out everything from dad. While they waited for a taxi, Michelle called her father and gave him a heads up. He was taken aback. He had hoped that Megan's memory would recover after he and Joanna returned the child. Where is my baby? Megan protested. And what right do you have over him? The woman practically stormed into the apartment. Peter calmed her down and explained what had happened. According to his opinion, he and Joanna just needed a little more time to fully execute their plan. However, Megan intended to take matters into her own hands. Peter and Michelle practically had to restrain her to prevent her from attempting to forcefully take the baby back. After a few days, when Peter and Megan's daughter had already left, Joanna invited Todd to a crowded cafe. There, she revealed that he wouldn't be seeing any money. A much less pleasant future awaited him. A police car was already on its way for him. Joanna had been recording all her conversations with Todd. In this way, she had collected a wealth of incriminating evidence, which she now intended to use. Todd, looking around nervously, whispered, Say goodbye to Megan's child. Oh, no, sweetheart. It's you who should bid farewell, not only to him, but also to your freedom. Your little one is now with my best friend, the nanny I recommended to you, and I think, Joanna glanced at her watch. By now, she's already reached Megan and handed her son over. Everything was calculated. Everything was planned. Oh, you should have worked with me after all. The guy responded with a mix of admiration and regret. Todd was arrested right in the cafe. The child was indeed handed over to Megan by the temporary nanny, and the biological mother embraced the responsibilities of caring for him wholeheartedly. However, she didn't forget about her daughter either. She occasionally called Michelle, providing financial help. Peter also maintained contact with Michelle, but his calls were not as frequent as his daughter might have wished due to his own busy life. Yet, Michelle didn't stress over the lack of parental attention. She had more exciting matters to focus on. The bustling, vibrant city offered ample prospects, an entirely different circle of friends, and education at a prestigious university. On one of the few evenings that Michelle spent in her room, 
She closed her eyes and smiled. The situation had resolved itself in the best possible way for her.